Hello, welcome if you've just joined us. Maybe time for a couple of quick cards. Hannah Louise Rogerson is celebrating a second birthday today. Lots of love from Mummy, Daddy, Nanny, Grandpa, and also Grandad and Betty and Ginger, and Weetabix and Biggles and kisses for you too. And Marie Edwards, lots of love from Nana and Grandad Edwards. Now, Fat Tulip. <laughs> Have you ever watched a tortoise jogging? It's very, very boring because tortoises are so slow. Lewis Collins, the tortoise, was jogging through Fat Tulip's orchard. What? What are you doing that for? asked Ernie the frog. To keep fit, replied Lewis Collins, in case the gardens attacked. What? Who'd want to attack us? Giants and ogres and aliens from outer space, replied Lewis Collins. You have to be very fit to fight aliens. Look, see how quickly I can run to that apple tree and back. What? How long is this going to take? whispered Ernie. All day, I should think, replied Sylv. What? I don't think there are such things as aliens, said Ernie. But Lewis Collins just slowly turned his head and glared at the two frogs. Down at the police station, the prisoners were incredibly excited. Tomorrow was the day of the policeman's ball, and the prisoners were making all the food. Some of them were doing the cheese straws, some of the others were making the chocolate spread sandwiches, and Fred the baddie was in charge of the trifle. Inspector Challoner came marching breezily past the cells, checking that everyone was doing everything properly. Took a bite out of a cheese straw. Too salty, he said. Had a mouthful out of a chocolate spread sandwich. Not enough chocolate spread, he said. And then suddenly, he caught sight of Fred the Baddie's trifle. Where's the custard? he shouted. What? replied Fred the Baddie. The custard! You'll have to speak up, I'm a bit deaf. It needs custard, roared the inspector. All right, if you say so, said Fred the Baddie. I've had to organise everything for this ball, moaned the inspector. I had to fold all the serviettes myself, had to draw the horse for pin the tail on the policeman's horse myself. I've even got to write all the invitations myself. Now, where did I put the invitation list? Oh, I know. It's written on my blanket. Then suddenly, his face turned white, and he had a terrible, panicky feeling in his stomach. Where was his blanket? Oh, no, he hadn't lost it, had he? Inspector Challoner's favourite thing in the whole world was his blanket. It was about this big, it was frayed at the edges, it was all grubby and it was yellow, but he took it with him everywhere. And what was more important was that written on it in felt-tip pen was everything he needed to know. The times of the buses, the days the clocks went back, and the list of people he was supposed to invite to the policeman's ball. What would he do if he'd lost it? Without his blanket, he couldn't send out his invitations. Back in the garden, Lewis Collins was showing Ernie and Sylve how he made himself strong by weightlifting. He'd got a little twig with an acorn tied to each end of it. But why do you want to be strong? asked Sylve. To scare aliens, said Lewis Collins. Aliens get very scared of strong tortoises. And very slowly, he lowered his neck, he wrapped his mouth round the twig, and he lifted it this high off the ground. What? I don't think he's very strong at all, whispered Ernie. Do -do 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 -do. Inspector Challoner came bursting into Fat Tulip's kitchen. We've got an emergency on our hands, Squire, he said. I've lost my blanket. I've got to find it, he said, as he pushed Fat Tulip's pink legs aside and crawled under the kitchen table, because my Aunt Edie gave it to me, and she'd be ever so upset if I lost it. 
And what's more, he said, climbing up onto a chair and looking in the lampshade, if I don't find it, I won't be able to get to sleep. And what is more, he said, climbing into the fireplace and looking up the chimney, it's got written on it all the names and addresses of the people I'm going to invite to the policeman's ball. Ooh, that is an emergency, said Fat Tulip. But he couldn't find it anywhere. Maybe, said the inspector, it's in the garden. Oh. I well, don't fancy going out there, said Fat Tulip. It's getting dark. It's a bit cloudy. I think it's going to rain. Ha! scoffed the inspector. What's a bit of rain at a time like this? And whew, he shot out into the garden. Meanwhile, down by the vegetable patch, Lewis Collins and the two frogs were standing on top of the compost heap. Any minute now, said Lewis Collins, I'm going to do something really brave. I'm going to jump off this compost heap. But why do you want to be brave, asked Sylph? Won't you just hurt yourself? When the aliens land, said Lewis Collins, you'll be glad there's someone like me around. At that moment, <laughs> there was a clap of thunder and it started to rain. <laughs> Went Lewis Collins and hid in his shell. Come on, Ernie, said Sylph. It's pouring down. Let's get some shelter. And they tumbled head over heels down the compost heap and hopped off into the bushes. They hadn't gone very far when they saw ahead of them a grubby old yellow blanket. Quick, said Sylph, under here, this will keep us dry. And they crawled under it and lay there safe and warm, listening to the sound of the rain outside. Then, by mistake, Ernie stuck a flipper into Sylph's stomach and then, by mistake, Sylph poked Ernie in the eye and then, accidentally, Ernie sat on Sylvie's face and soon they were rolling around, laughing and fighting and generally mucking around. Then the rain stopped, the sun came out again, and on top of the compost heap, Lewis Collins stuck his head back out of his shell. Wait a minute. Where were those two young frogs? He'd better find out where they were before they came to any harm. He raced down the compost heap as quickly as he could, which was incredibly slowly, lumbered across to the bushes and peered inside. Ahead of him, he saw a grubby old yellow blanket that was writhing and wriggling and making noises. Is it an ogre, thought Lewis Collins, or a giant? No, it's an alien. Then, from underneath it, he heard a voice going, What packing? What help? Stop squashing me! It was the voice of Ernie the Frog. Great Scott! thought Lewis Collins. The alien squashing Ernie Frog. Pretty soon he'll be as flat as a hedgehog on a motorway. And very cautiously, but very bravely, he edged a bit nearer to the alien and he said in a loud voice, Alien, go back to your own planet and leave our young animals alone. But the alien didn't take any notice. It just kept on writhing and wriggling and giggling. Alien, said Lewis Collins, if you don't fly off immediately, I'll have to get tough. But still, the alien didn't take any notice. Right, said Lewis Collins, you've asked for it. I'm going to blow you off into outer space. And he took in a deep breath. At that moment, a huge shadow fell across the blanket as Inspector Challoner peered through the bushes. My blanket, he said. My lovely yellow blanket. I found it. What a relief. And he bent down to pick it up. Lewis Collins blew. <laughs> at the same time, the inspector's unseen hand clutched at the blanket and whee! It went flying into the air. I've done it, shouted Lewis Collins, and he watched in amazement as the yellow alien rocketed off and disappeared out of sight. That'll teach you to come messing around with tortoises, he said. Then he turned to the two young frogs who were lying blinking in the sun now that their shelter had vanished. Panic's over, chaps, he said. You're safe now. May the force go with you. And he lumbered off. Ernie and Sylve didn't say anything. Sometimes there was just no point arguing with Lewis Collins. Next day was the day of the policeman's ball, and all the invitations had been sent out, so everybody was there. All the policemen and policewomen, all the prisoners, and of course, Fat Tulip. They played pin the tail on the policeman's horse, policeman's knock, <coughs> murder in the dark, and then it was time for the food. Inspector Challoner proudly gave everybody a dollop of trifle, and then they all sat down to eat. Ooh, went Fat Tulip, and he took a swig full of orange squash. Ooh, went all the police women and they fanned their mouths with their notebooks. 
Oh, when all the policemen and they spat in their helmets. Who has put mustard in the trifle? Me, said Fred the Baddy. Inspector Challoner told me to. I said custard, not mustard, replied Inspector Challoner. Oh, sorry, said Fred the Baddy. I'm a bit deaf. I thought you said mustard. <laughs> Went all the prisoners. Custard for mustard, mustard for custard. <laughs> what a good joke. And they laughed and they laughed and they laughed till it was time for them to go back into their cells. <laughs> What? <laughs>